welcome to our first video um, session where we're going to be basically going through. So I talked a little bit about before about how we're going to be bringing guests in. We're going to be getting lots of tools and resources for people to help them. And today we're going to be talking about emotional resilience. And I've got Sophie Powell's come to talk to us, which I'm really excited about. We're going to be talking. Hi, Sophie. Hi. So exciting. <laughs> Um, and I wanted to kind of outline the strategies that we've got for building this kind of a most, um, sorry, um, resilience toolkit. So we're kind of focusing particularly on emotional resilience today. And there's four main strategies of doing that. So we've got basically to think about what kind of um, things are going to help us to build this emotional resilience which can be helpful when we're faced with lots of challenges. And, and I think really the idea of these recordings is to provide a really helpful resource for people. And I want to basically um, offer support and lots of tools and resources that people can use if they are struggling um, and need help. So we're gonna be talking about all the things that you know, might be helpful and also creating um, you know, a kind of connected community where we can share ideas and resources too. So, the main kind of things that I've been looking at is creating this toolkit is the way that you can think about four main areas to look at for building resilience. So we've got strategies, which is like practical things you can do. That might be going for a walk, doing your mindfulness practice, um, journaling or writing. Then we've got strengths, which is all about kind of your inner, your inner core strength and tapping into that. So that's more about finding that inner kind of courage, having self-compassion and um, kind thoughts towards yourself, building, having patience, a sense of humor, bringing in laughter. So it's kind of those inner qualities that you know that are already in there, but how can you kind of really kind of connect into them? Then we've got resources. So that's things maybe that you can kind of access from outside that might be things like podcasts and books. It might be people that you talk to that are really inspiring or poetry that's great or stories, films, could be anything, but things that you know that when you connect to those that makes you feel better and gives you strength. And then also insights, which is more to do with kind of perspective on what the challenge is. So that's really about having like a growth mindset where you see challenge in life as a way of fostering growth. So it's about really okay life is a journey it can be a roller coaster and there can be challenges along the way and often from those hard times we come through and we gain strength and you know that can be I think sometimes although it's really hard and sometimes I totally appreciate that it doesn't feel like that at the time at all but it's often you know when you look back and you realize what you've actually gained from it I think you know but just having that kind of mindset where you think, okay, what can I gain from this? What is this challenge going to help me to, you know, grow or what strength can I get from it? And, you know, sometimes you need support to have, to be able to get into that headspace. I think sometimes it's hard to do it on your own. Um, so what we're going to do today is um, I've invited Sophie along because I know you've just um, really, you've had loads of experience in your life already. You've done so many different things. And you've had some challenges along the way, haven't you? And I, and I just feel like it'd be really nice to share all the things that you've found helpful and, you know, that maybe people will be able to connect with and get some ideas or resources from too. So, you know, um, I'm just going to let you chat and tell us a little bit about your story and things. So, yeah. so I first came to you when I was 15, I think, with problems. And I'm so lucky that I had a mum who put me in the car and brought me to someone who had a holistic approach and you helped me and then you've been that kind of port of call whenever I've got any problems emotionally physically you're the first person that I call so it's really lovely to chat to you today uh -huh. and, uh, and for me I, I think um, especially at the moment um, I think when this first all happened um, it really affected me um, I do suffer from anxiety um, I have suffered from anxiety and depression and mental health issues in the past um, which I feel like we all have in some way or another. But um, I think the, the lowest point in my life is when I came to you quite a few years ago after a really, really hard time. Um, and my mum just put me in the car and was like, we're going to see Sally. And, um, you know, in life, there's really big highs and really big lows. And sometimes they can be so contrasting and so different. It's really, really hard to know 
how to deal with the bits in between. Um, yeah. And that's where I struggled. A lot of success from a very young age yeah. and, and kind of not being a child and not being an adult and not really knowing, well, not really knowing what to do. And there's no, there's no map. There's no guide, there's no rules, and we're all making it up as we go along. And um, there was a point in my life where I felt very, very lost and very um, anxious and down and just overwhelmed. Um, and I came to you and we had conversations and herbal medicine and um, you taught me ways of looking at life and coping strategies and mindfulness and meditation and things that I were doing, but you reminded me to yeah. revisit those things and make it a daily practice and um so i feel like the bad situations in my life my extreme lows at the time like you say i was like why is this happening to me yeah. this is awful this is what there's no reason for this but then now with coronavirus i feel quite well equipped to deal with it don't get me wrong when it first happened i was a mess i was anxious yeah. and nervous and crying and panicky but then i calm myself down, brought myself back, grounded myself. Um, yeah. And I still have the odd day where I'm like, oh gosh, this is really weird and strange. And it is strange and it is weird. Yeah. And if you are feeling anxious or down or however you're feeling now is totally fine and understandable. And you have every reason to feel the feelings you're feeling. Right. For me, I think the things that helped me were, I've just started a daily practice. So I allowed myself to have a bit of an a wobble <laughs> yeah, that's um, yeah. but the first thing I thought um, I talk to people so yes. rather than trying to be the person that I am when people ask how I am and say I'm fine I'm fine everything's fine I was like no mm -hmm. I'm not fine actually I feel crap and yeah. then we have a conversation and you realize you're not alone and it's valid and yeah. um, so talking to people I feel like has been the best thing yeah um, keeping in contact with people which this whole situation is making us all do. Yes. You know, like we're connecting, we're reaching yes. out, we're FaceTiming my Nana every day and my mum and my friends that I haven't spoken to and having group chats. So I felt more connected and more loved with friends and family than I have in a long time. Yes. Um, and then secondly, just daily practices. That's what I'm really, really trying to do. So, um, which is hard. And I mean, I had a bad day the other day and all I wanted to do was sit on the sofa and have a cup of tea and watch something on Netflix, which I did. And it felt great. But then I'm just trying to impl implement these daily practices. So um, most days I have for the last 10 days, every day I get up, I'm reading a book called The Artist's Way at the moment, which is a really brilliant book. It was gifted to me, but I had the excuse of never having enough time to do it or start it. When now I've got no excuse. So I was like, first Yes, I need to open that book. Yeah. So I opened the book and I've started. So I do morning pages every morning, which yeah, which is yeah, a really good practice, isn't it? Yeah, it's amazing. And it's just yeah. stream of consciousness. You're not even thinking about what you're writing. Sometimes I write, I do not know what to write, but just you do three <laughs> pages and you just have to write three pages. Yeah. And then I get up and I meditate and do yoga or yoga and meditate. And then my yeah. boyfriend and I listened to an amazing podcast with Wim Hof and Russell Brand um, called okay. Under the Skin. Yeah. And he was saying how important breathing is and cold, cold, having a cold shower in the morning. Yeah. Yes, um, I've been reading about this too. Yeah. yeah. Amazing how just having a yeah. cold shower can force your body to produce loads of white blood, blood cells and make oxygen go to parts of the body it doesn't normally. Yeah. And so every morning I've been... <laughs> writing my pages, meditating and yoga, or yoga and meditating, and then um, going in a cold shower, which yes. is awful. Well done. Awesome. So well done, because I, uh, I I like the idea and then I'm too scared to. Oh my God, it's horrible. And yeah. when you make yourself do it and you do the breathing exercise that it teaches you while in the cold shower, oh. and I started at 30 seconds and I'm at two minutes now. Oh so my God, well done. And actually, you get used to it. It never changes. Every morning, I'm like, I'm not going in, but I do it. <laughs> and, and then after that, just um, a really nice, healthy breakfast. At the moment, I'm loving um, 
a nice smoothie with green powders and protein. But yep. I think I might run out of protein next week, so I might have to start having toast. I don't know. And um, so yeah. I'm just go in with it. And some mornings I don't feel it's like that. Like putting um, like almond butter in them as well. You know, as a different type of protein. I think. Yeah. You know, that might be good because it's really good to have your protein in the morning, keep your blood sugar nice and steady. Isn't I really it? notice yeah. it when I've had my protein in the morning. I do feel like my energy levels are really consistent the whole day and my mood actually. Yes, um, exactly. I was thinking for mood, yeah, and helping with anxiety that can be helpful, can't it? Yeah, so, and just taking time yeah. to sit and mindfully eat. So we have no phones, no technology, and we sit by a window. So we sit by our bay window and, um, haven't got a garden, so we have to keep leaning out of the window. And um, yeah. we make sure that we eat all of our meals in front of our bay window, which yeah. is just a really nice thing. We pretend we're in a cafe for five minutes. <laughs> and then um, and then we have our breakfast, and then I just go about my day, and I just listen to my body. Some days I feel like I want to go for my daily walk. Some days I feel like just watching something. Some days I feel like bringing a friend and connecting. I'm trying. Um, as well yeah. for um, for you can subscribe to during this time or follow them on Instagram. It's just lots of happy news. Yes. It's real news that's happening, um, and it's just really, really nice. And I just feel like people mm -hmm. might enjoy that, especially now. And um, my friend Emily created it, and actually she created it. Mm -hmm. We're going through a hard time, um, and it made her create something positive. So um, it's a beautiful newspaper, and I write a poem every month yeah. for it. So just trying to be creative and write poems and. Um, and just be creative art and reading a lot um, and just yeah. connecting with people and then make sure I have lunch in my window and then in the afternoon again just do whatever I feel like in the space and then every afternoon we're doing a Joe Wicks the body coach workout <laughs> in our living room and our yeah. neighbours below us probably hate us because we're like jumping around and, um, and then we go for our daily walk and then come back and just have dinner and listen to a podcast or chill or just I think the most important thing is there's so much pressure on everyone to yes. use this time productively and yes. learn it well and actually just it's so foreign and so different it's actually okay if you just want to like I follow Matt Haig on Instagram um, and yeah. a huge fan of Matt Haig I've read all of his books and I think he's just an incredible human and a yeah. real voice for the voiceless and um I just think he's amazing and um he posts a lot on his Instagram about just get out of bed and brush your teeth and that's enough for today. You know, some days that is just enough, you know, and yeah. I feel like there's so much pressure on us all to oh, use this time. But actually, we've all had such busy lives that yeah. actually just having a bit of time, just enjoy it. <laughs> um, we were thinking about like the sort of um, self-compassion as well, weren't we? We were talking about that and about... Yeah maybe just making sure that you're framing your thoughts in a positive way and not having that kind of critical voice there that's yeah. either making you feel guilty or, you know, like you're talking about, maybe just making you feel like you should be productive all the time. And, and, and you talked as well about, didn't you, about having maybe like a pattern in the week. So although we're all inside and we're, a lot of people are working from home now, um, you know, have trying to keep that kind of routine of having some days off and not yeah. feeling like you've got to be working all the time, or like you say, being because you were talking about you wanting to write a script, weren't you, as well? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. And just That's being that pressure. Need to get that thing. Really at the moment. I can't. My two loves are acting, storytelling, and traveling, and I can't do any of that really at the moment. But I can be creative, and I can't can write scripts and I can write poetry and I can dream of travel and <laughs> um, and um, I just feel like but also I'm not going to beat myself up if I don't feel like doing that that yeah. day and it's all right I just think we are so it's very easy to say mean things to yourself yes it's very hard to be kind to yourself yeah and, and I, I don't know I think there's a lot of beautiful things happening at the moment like I, I definitely try and just find some gratitude like um yeah. Yeah, who we, have, who we have around us, like I don't. A lot of lovely things are happening. Like my daily walk in the park, I'm seeing a lot of families spending time together, and people who didn't have time are now connecting. And um, yeah. the, even the bush outside my garden's got more bees on it than I've ever seen ever. Wow. Yeah, like That's I've never amazing. seen bees. And it, there's a swarm of bees, and I don't know. Maybe they're coming back because. 
they can and there's um it, down the road in east london there's um deers walking the streets just wow. walking the streets in people's gardens and um air pollution has stopped and and yeah. fish are in the river in the water in venice and all these things are actually beautiful i yeah. know obviously it's awful and people are financially worried and people have got kids and there is a lot of stress yeah. um I mean, ring me in a couple of weeks, I might not be so positive, but at the moment, I'm just really trying to just find a bit of gratitude. And we can't, my boyfriend told me something the other day, the other day that he read, and it was, um, panic, you have no control, or relax, you have no control. Yeah. The way we have no control. So I think the best thing to do is just try and relax and just surrender to it and just try and stay as calm and happy and healthy as you can. Yeah, and so it's about building, you know, what you can do, isn't it? About having, you know, the things you do have control about, which is definitely what you're putting in your body, what exercise you're doing, you know, having your sleep patterns and putting all those kind of basics in place to keep yourself well. And then what you're allowing your, you know, your kind of allowing yourself, exposing yourself to, you know, like maybe limiting the news that you're watching or watching, you know, what social media things that you're picking up, like choosing things that are going to be helpful rather than things that are going to maybe fill you with fear or worry. Yeah. Um, and also I think, you know, definitely having this kind of routine seems to be very helpful. I think, you know, having a practice, like a daily routine that you stick to and connecting, I think connection seem, you know, is very important, isn't it? Really? And I'm just thinking about, you know, because you've had like lots of difficult things in the past, haven't you? Like challenges that have happened. Yeah. And, um, and I know, you know, at times, um, some of those have been really hard. Like, what do you think has been the main things that have helped you in the past that you think you might have to kind of draw on now? If Say, for example, for people I'm thinking, because obviously lots of people are having really challenging times like with financial worries with jobs you know or maybe actually just very stressed with working very long hours like key workers and frontline workers at the moment and you know and all this uncertainty people just don't know what's going to happen next and we none of us know how long it's going to go on for and there's so much you know we're looking at the global picture and wondering what's going to happen as well so i think it's you know it's really about tapping into those things that maybe in the past you've found helpful and remembering that, okay, when I had this challenge before, like now this is, actually, you know, that actually helped me. Okay, how can I tap into that now? Um, yeah. So I was just thinking of those things that you've found useful in the past, like you might like to share with people or... Um... I read a book um, called The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. Yeah. Eckhart Tolle. And I always find that really, really helpful. Just all we've got is now. You yes. never, you are never living in the past, and you are you are never living in the future. You're only now. Yes. Yes. When I feel really because at the end of the day, no matter how crazy and out of control things get, the one thing I've realised is I I can't really do anything about a lot of things. It's just it's unraveling and 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 it, and it's hectic, and I can feel myself going into a full blown panic attack. Yeah. But the thing that brings me back from that is just now. All I've got is now, and yeah. I'm here now, and I'm okay, and things will get better, and this isn't permanent. And yeah. um, I don't know, it, it's that whole thing of without nighttime, there is no daytime. And if you've never experienced a dark time, then would you really appreciate the sun? And um, I do think that this will make us all a lot more grateful. Yes. And, um, but I, I can't imagine what some people are going through, and I, I don't know. All I can do is just, oh God, I just hope everyone's okay and you know the NHS workers and everyone have, have blown me away like pe humans are amazing like yes. humans are really really amazing and I'm so inspired by so many people and um, it's just amazing but I do think just being trying to stay in the moment and not worry too much about the future or get caught up in past actions I just think mm -hmm. just be here now and um are there particular apps or, you know, what, what, what do you use for your mindfulness practice? Like, what have you found that's most mm, I really like the Calm app. Um, yeah. Headspace is really good. You put me on Headspace, yeah. I think. Yes. Um, I really love um, Fern Cotton's podcast. Yes, yes. I, I really love that. It's amazing. Um, she had Erling Craig on, um, I think I've said his name wrong, but he's a polar explorer and I love his book as well. 
and that's a really amazing book about the power of isolation and oh, okay. time. Um, so that's really good. Um, I love Russell Brand, Under the Skin. Yeah. Um, and I just love um, music as well. Just, I think any music that brings you happiness, just listen to yeah. that. Yes. Yeah. Music, read a book, um, and just check in with your friends. I think especially one thing we have learned through the past is um, yeah. check in with that strong friend as well, the friend that you think is okay. Yes. Just check in with that friend. Yes. Um, and yeah, I just feel like for me, it's the things that help me are eating as healthy as possible. Mm -hmm. um, although we still had ice cream at the weekend um, <laughs> and ice cream and then um and um eat as healthy as possible drink lots of water yeah be kind to yourself don't give yourself a hard time yeah which i'm a hypocrite because i'm the best at giving myself hey, i think you have struggled with <laughs> yeah. you? i think so that's you know actually that is a massive thing to yeah to learn how to recognize when you're doing that and to kind of hear that voice and then to kind of see what's happening i think you know that inner critic it's it can creep up on us without realizing can't it you know and you don't even notice and then before you realize that you're feeling quite down and you think you know and then you realize actually i'm really that's i think it's just that inner critic is back with it's really horrible you know sometimes can be worse than anything you would say to anyone else or you know it really you know can be so um hurtful but actually you know once you recognize that that's what it is you can i think then just having that awareness of it then be able to think no that's not true you know actually and, and then really turn it around to have the self-compassion and you know that can be so powerful i think really incredibly powerful just being able to recognize when it's kicking in and being able to to kind of shut it down i think you have to be have like zero tolerance for that you know i, I not, agree mm. i remember sitting in the chair in your office and i was being so mean to myself like so mean and no one was saying any of the, these things about me or these self-beliefs other than me yeah like, none of this is real you've made this whole yes, story about it. yourself and then you told me to put um, an elastic band on my wrist yes every time that i felt myself being negative just ping it on my wrist yeah to try. Like, gonna work. and now like honestly i still do it if i'm having a bad day i'm like every time i say something bad about myself i'm gonna ping that elastic band on my wrist because yeah. we need to stop because i think we're all so quick to judge ourselves and be mean yeah and, and, think of virus and, down. and i think you know particularly if you're on your own i think for particularly for people that are on their own self-isolating at the moment you can so get into your own head can't you that whatever's in there feels like reality even if it's really not you know you can create a whole story in your mind and i was looking at some lovely work by um brene brown i don't know if you've seen her stuff which i mean i, I really love her but she talks a lot about how as humans we have to make a story so if we have kind of two points of information which i think people may be doing at the moment you know you say you've got information about how many people are dying from coronavirus or you know what's the story with what's going on you know there's lots of information at the moment with like gaps in the middle that we don't know what's going to happen or we don't know what the possibility could be and the brain is very powerful at wanting to make up a story or a narrative to fill that space so if we've got two points of information it will make up a story in the middle and that and that becomes reality you know that can be our reality and before we know it we believe it and that's kind of feels like you can get quite anxious because you think oh my god but actually it's just you know our brain is just really powerful at creating this kind of this is just a story or a narrative it's trying to make sense of things but it's not real you know no. and, um, and I think sometimes you know you're trying to you know recognizing okay is that real how about you know am, am I actually seeing the facts here you know we don't know what's going to happen but it doesn't you know we don't have to then create the worst case scenario you know we can actually just focus on the facts and maybe just live with the fact that there is a bit of uncertainty but you know we were talking about building resilience to that weren't we so building resilience to that and also being adaptable to change which i think humans have an incredible ability to do that don't they but sometimes it's hard when it immediately hits you you can panic and it's hard to then think okay i can probably change and just do things a bit differently and 
you know, maybe actually there's a better way of doing it. I've been doing it one way for ages and this is going to shake it up and I'm going to have to do it in a different way now. So using it, like I'm talking about this kind of growth mindset, maybe thinking, okay, well, we're going to use it as a challenge. Like how can I change my practice the way I do things to maybe fit in with what's happening now? And is this maybe a better way to do it anyway? Or even if it isn't and you kind of wanting to go back, there will be some lessons in there about, well, okay, actually this was really working before, or, you know, I can, I think you'll learn from it, even if actually, you know, you find that, okay, maybe this new way isn't so great, but that's in itself, you know, you're learning something from that, aren't you? So, you know, I, I think adaptability, we were talking about that, weren't we, about, you know, how being adaptable to change is so helpful in, making it less stressful really I, do feel like that. I, I feel like um it sounds really weird but being like water just move yeah. around and just keep flowing and um, i was laughing with my boyfriend I, i'm quite lucky i live with a very calm human and yeah. in, i said like i said before like in my mind he's like on a river floating down the stream in a lilo like just taking it all in his stride and i'm on the white white water, water rapids like, ah! and <laughs> it's quite nice to sit on the lilo with him for a while and have a chill but um yeah. i do i do feel like this is definitely um i know for myself i am i'm always distracting myself so keeping busy always doing something always trying to be productive proactive keeping yeah. fit seeing a friend i'm always distracting myself with outside things so that i don't really ever have to sit with myself oh, um, yeah. and there's one thing that i am doing at the moment it's sitting with myself a lot and yes. to start with, I feel like that's where the panic set in because then your mind is talking at you all day. And it's yes. so used to being distracted by getting up at five in the morning and going to my job that I do. Yes. Um, um, emailing people to try and make things happen. Seeing yes. a friend, staying connected, keeping in touch with all my family. Yep. Whereas now, I can't really socialize. I can't socialize. I can't go to work. Yes. Um, I can't leave the house. I can't distract myself. I can't just nip to the pub or the yeah. shops. Or yeah. and actually, it's been amazing. I've realised I don't really need anything. Mm. And I'm actually, or and I'm actually okay. Like I actually like myself, and I like being on my own. And yeah. that's a massive realisation for me. Like just to be able to sit with myself and yeah. not need distraction or external stimulation. Yeah, so to sit. And I'm like, well, that's. It was hard like it is, it's still hard sometimes but yeah just give it and, and, and we're always so busy and oh I can't I've got to do this or I'm oh, yeah I really would love to do that but I can't and yeah. I feel like the gift of time we've all been given actually I mean it's really yeah. like I said before it's so easy for me I don't have kids I'm yeah I worked I've got money in the bank that I've saved um I don't have really anything to, to worry about um, and I, I can imagine this whole situation would be a lot harder if I had external, uh, more, more stress and more things to worry about. Yeah. Um, but I do feel like there is a time in every day that someone can find a little bit of calm. And yeah. maybe do one of those things, just take even silly things. Like I really enjoy making my morning coffee and just sitting and yeah. it's just sitting and enjoying it. Yeah. And um, I feel like no matter how busy you are, you can just sit and enjoy a coffee. Yeah. Or just take five minutes to just sit and breathe. Or, um, I mean, some people are so busy and I can't even imagine how the NHS workers feel right now. They must be overwhelmed and exhausted, but I hope they're taking some time. And, oh, yeah. I don't know. It's, it's hard. I mean, it's, it's easy for me to feel this way, but I hope, that, I hope that no matter how busy you are, or how overwhelmed you can talk to someone or take five minutes or try and do meditation. I mean, YouTube's amazing. Like mm. even if you don't do yoga, YouTube's got amazing. Like even you can do a class of a 10 minute yoga class, just 10 minutes, just yes. move your for 10 minutes. Or I love to just lay with my legs up the wall for 10 yeah. minutes. Or, um, yeah. I mean, and you have been very busy though, haven't you? I mean, you've had years of being like, yeah flat out busy so you know about being busy as well don't you yeah yeah I've um, had times where I literally leave my house at five in the morning and I don't get back till midnight or yeah. um and work in 12 hour days and um yeah. trying to look after ill fam family members mm -hmm. while working and maintain relationships and um my own health and people around me's health and you know I, I have 
But I just feel like right now in this moment, I feel very fortunate in my yeah. situation. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I feel like those hard times, I think they make you more empathetic as well. And yeah, definitely. I, I feel like, I feel like um, with a hot, there's people in really bad situations right now, which can only make you feel more grateful um, <laughs> and take the time and be grateful um, and try and help other people if you can and reach out even if it's just calling someone you know is lonely or yeah. um, doing some shopping for someone who can't or um ringing your gran every day <laughs> yeah definitely and that can make you feel good as well can't it because one of the yeah. things that i noticed actually that came out of the um building resilience was also the things that can make you feel good is having a sense of purpose and i think that is actually that's almost what you're saying i think which is something that people may find if they've just lost their job or they're just stuck at home and suddenly haven't got so much work to do like where's your purpose gone actually and that's you know I think that sometimes that's really hard although people think oh yeah I've got a bit of a break that can be quite stressful if you suddenly don't have any there's no satisfaction in the day because you're not creating anything or there's no purpose to the day so I think you know like you say there's so much you know there's lots of volunteering opportunities at the moment as well aren't there that you know yeah people can maybe tap into and that can actually help you as well you know that can help to lift your mood can't it as well because you're then basically you've got a purpose to the day and you know that you know it's important what you're doing is important um, and I think it gives you a bit of sense of power and control as well that maybe there's actually a lot going on out there but but you're part of the solution in a way you know so that's actually helpful and even if you know none of us know what will happen um i think the part of the solution is everyone joining together and just supporting each other staying at and home that's the biggest thing you can do right now the exactly. biggest contribution you can make to society is if you don't need to leave your house don't yes and then exactly. and, and my little contribution is i'm trying to support local business as well so yeah we're trying to shop locally and help independent businesses so yeah. um a little local coffee shop down the road they're delivering like our milk and coffee and some bread and then a small family run supermarket they're delivering our shopping so i think if you can do that do that yeah. because it's, a, it's the small independent businesses that are going to struggle yeah right um, yeah i just think help be a good neighbor be a good human have a bit of compassion and humanity but yeah. i think all we can really do at the moment is be kind to ourselves and not panic and try and stay as calm as possible and be kind to ourselves and use this time to cultivate some really healthy habits for ourselves mentally and physically. Like yeah. use this time to get fit and maybe try yoga and maybe try and meditate even if you start just five minutes a day. I mean, I yeah. love guided meditation. I, I'm still not at the stage where I could just sit in silence for an hour without anything. I need something because um, my brain's busy. Um, and I love guided meditation. I find them so helpful. Um, and on YouTube, there's so many lovely ones. I mean, some of them are out there and I've had to stop them because I get in the giggles and I just can't. But um, some of them are really beautiful and really amazing. Um, the oh, yoga... Sorry, go on. And the yoga on YouTube is great as well. And there is lots of things that you could try. Mm, and I was thinking maybe we can... If some of the things that you'd recommend, you know, like if there's anything that you've tried that you've found particularly helpful, we can just make a list and yeah. pop those up underneath. Because I think that, you know, it's always nice to have recommendations, isn't it? Because there's so much out there. And, you know, sometimes it's just the voice. Sometimes people have a really, uh, a really calming voice. It can, that can make a difference between a really good guided meditation and one that's like actually a bit irritating or, you know, you're not really going to enjoy it so much. So I think, you know, that, that would be really helpful and we can... Yeah those in for people yeah. uh, was there anything you want to ask me about as well you know about um mm, just what what things you would recommend like is there any supplements that you think are important right now or any daily anything that you think we should any foods that you think we should incorporate or um, yeah. i think something about prebiotics before or yeah. So we were, I mean, I've been looking at kind of this, the College of Medicine has issued guidelines about what they recommend for supplements and definitely the big things coming out of that are vitamin D. So people, you know, in terms of like physical, keeping your body strong. So there's, you know, vitamin D supplements. There's also been some, um, definitely probiotics. There's been some studies which show that probiotic, taking probiotics can help prevent you getting 
um, like respiratory infections. But also uh, in China, they've been noticing that some people do get um, digestive um, complications from coronavirus. So um, the probiotics are help, you know, can be helpful with that. So um, I have put a, uh, there's a blog on our Orchard Barn website, oh, yeah. uh, which I've, I've put like the different brands and dosages that I'd recommend. There's also some, there's some thought that vitamin C and zinc can be helpful. I mean, they generally boost the immune system, not so specifically against coronavirus, but they generally have that effect. And uh, medicinal mushrooms, which also, they have beta glucans in, which can be helpful for boosting immunity. So they're also thought to be helpful. The other thing is um, selenium, which you can get from eating Brazil nuts. So I'm just recommending people to eat like two Brazil nuts a day, which is good for um, getting the daily amount of selenium that you need. And then having plenty of fruit and vegetables. So there's some research looking at polyphenols, which are kind of chemicals that you get in fruit and vegetables that help to um, protect the inside of the blood vessels. And we think that coronavirus can damage some of those and that might be where you get complications. So, and obviously fruit and vegetables are good for your immune system anyway. So I and always find- kind of, Yes, dark chocolate too. That is true, yes. Oh, that, and I was like, yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so I was thinking, you know, with a diet, it's always good to have this idea of like a rainbow diet, you know, having lots of different colorful, fruit and vegetables, having mostly vegetables. So say seven, we, we kind of ideally say five to seven portions of vegetables and two to three portions of fruit. So 80, 20. 80, 80 vegetables, 20 fruit. Is that about right? Would you yeah, say? Yeah, I would say, yeah. Just because the fruit's got a lot of the fruit sugars in. So, you, and if you're going to go for fruits, um you know ideally the lower sugar ones so i mean it's nice as a treat sometimes but things like mangoes and grapes can be quite high so not having too much of those i mean it's fine to have sometimes but um and um yeah so and then all of, and then nuts and seeds and your essential fatty acids are always useful they're good for reducing inflammation in the body and there is some you know when we look at what coronavirus does in the body there's certainly uh, an inflammatory part of it so it seems to the the really severe complications come when inflammation is really starting to build up in the body so I think just generally things you can do to reduce inflammation which is a lot of what we talked about reducing stress you know that has a massive impact on your immune system and inflammation in the body and you know is really helpful so um and keeping your blood sugars nice and steady so not having too much processed sugar or sugary food so i think you know all of those things can definitely be helpful as well so i think there's kind of the physical side of it you know building all that up things that i would recommend anyway and then at the moment i think the, the you know particular challenges which i'm trying to think okay what would be specifically helpful for that and i think what we've talked about is really you know helpful so some of it's going to be just general anxiety and panic. Some of it's going to be overload because of where you're working or because you have to do kids and work at home at the same time. And some of it's going to be more problems with like loneliness or not being able to connect to people that you love, isn't it? But all of those challenges, I think, you know, by putting these kind of practices in place, we're increasing our emotional resilience and that meets, makes it easier to deal with them anyway you know although they won't go away and you know we can just help ourselves to have the, the tools and the strategies to do the best we can really it's just about doing the best we can isn't it well it's so out of our control and um, there's not really a lot like you say there's nothing we can do apart from be as good to ourselves as possible and do all these little things that can make us as healthy as possible yeah um, and just try and be positive and um, even though it's so hard and just be there for people and spread a little yeah. bit of happiness and positivity and um, but it's so interesting about the prebiotics because obviously the brain the the, the gut is like the second brain yeah. of the body isn't it so it makes so much yeah. sense if your gut's healthy and yes. your whole body will be healthy yes and that makes a lot of sense so much of our immune systems in our gut so you know yeah. like the healthier the gut the they're stronger the immune system and like so 
sorry go ahead. <laughs> it's fine so i mean even like the fermented foods as well you know like the kefir and your sauerkraut and all of those that's good to put in the diet too yeah yeah so and the apple cider vinegar and all the nice cleansing things but i know that for me when i've been really anxious and down um if i if i'm ever like in at my height of like anxiety and panic attack the physical symptoms I get are ridiculous. Like I can convince myself I've got anything, like yeah. palpitations, full body tremors and tingles, and um, numbness in the back. You can, I think, people underestimate the power of the mind, yes. um, both positively and negatively. Yeah, um, we are so much stronger than we think we are. Yeah, um, and just being mentally strong and saying I can do this. I am stronger than this. Yeah. Even me and my boyfriend are going to do a workout now and I said to him before I don't really want to do it and he's like you'll feel so much better when you've done it and yeah. I, like, I know I will I know that when I've done that workout I'll feel amazing and Until all we can do is how we because we can and I think we don't want to be sat at home anxious and depressed and miserable all the time. I've been there, I've done that, and I refuse to let that consume any more of my life. I just need to be here now as positive and present as I can be and take advice from people like yourself and share the knowledge and try yeah. and help people who don't maybe know. Um yeah and just have a bit of empathy for and be a good just be kind. <laughs> I don't know, just be a good human and try your best. I mean none of us have ever been through this before really. It's yeah. foreign and new to all of us so there's no rules, there's no wrong or right wrong or right way to deal with it. Um, and however you feel is completely valid and fine. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the thing, isn't it? Thanks so much, Sophie. It's been really Thank lovely you. talking to you. Um, you. I'm going to like. Um, I think we'll sort of wrap up now, and then um, we're going to put. I'm going to put all the resources um, down below. Anything that Sophie's recommended, and if you want to ask questions for me for next time, I'm really happy to answer any questions we've got comments or if you want to share any resources as well we'd love to hear about that so just post them down below or add them onto the facebook page or instagram and we'd love to hear from all of you and wishing you well and we'll chat again soon bye Sophie. everyone thank you bye bye, bye. bye.